ISIS and Radical Islam, An Atheist Examines a Stupid Meme by Kyle Jones. In my last post, I examined a meme that attempted to show the Quran contains hate speech towards non-believers. I argue that when we view the passages in the meme in textual and historical context, the Quran is not even close to hate speech to non-Muslims. Additionally, I highlighted the perils of proof texting by using simplistic and naive memes. In this post, I tackled a similar meme. This one takes a few passages from the Quran and titles itself ISIS and Radical Islam's Daily Devotional. The issue here is not only whether the group that calls itself the Islamic State correctly interprets and implements Quranic teachings, but whether these verses, prima facie, mean what this meme maker thinks they do. I will not be addressing every verse here since I went through some of them in my last post. So let's take a look. 1. Slay the unbelievers wherever you find them. A full rendering of verse 2, 191 is as follows. And kill them wherever you overtake them, and expel them from wherever they have expelled you, and fitna is worse than killing. And do not fight them at al-Masjid al-Haram until they fight you there. But if they fight you, then kill them, such is the recompense of the disbelievers. First, a few things to notice. Expel them from wherever they have expelled you. Quote, do not fight them at al-Masjid al-Haram, that is the Grand Mosque in Mecca, until they fight you there. But if they fight you, then kill them. Does anyone else notice how this verse is not asking Muslims to preemptively kill? Doesn't this sound more like self-defense? This falls in line with what 22.40-41 through 41 says. Permission to fight is given to those against whom war is made, because they have been wronged. Those who have been driven out from their homes unjustly only because they said, Our Lord is God, and if God did not repel some men by means of others, there would surely have been pulled down temples and churches and synagogues and mosques. Wait, temples, churches, and synagogues? It's almost as if the Quran is for defending other religions in times of war. For instance, notice who is killing and attacking first in 321. Those who disbelieve in the signs of Allah and kill the prophets without right, and kill those who order justice from among the people, give them tidings of a painful punishment. Also, at the end of 2193, it says, Because if they cease, then there is to be no aggression except against the oppressors. Except against oppressors. You heard it. 2. Muslims must not take infidels as friends. 328 actually says, Let not believers take disbelievers as allies rather than believers. And whoever of you does that has nothing with the law, except when taking precaution against them in prudence. And a law warns you of himself, and to a law is the final destination. Does anyone else notice the rather than believers part? Or how about the except when taking precaution against them in prudence? I wonder what other Quranic passages say about this. 68. Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you because of religion and do not expel you from your homes, from being righteous towards them and acting justly toward them. Indeed, Allah loves those who act justly. What if I told Muslims might even have been granted permission to eat with and possibly marry Christians and Jews, people of the book. Check out 5.5. This day all good foods have been made lawful, and the food of those who were given the scripture is lawful for you, and your food is lawful for them. And lawful in marriage are chaste women from among the believers and chaste women from among those who were given the scripture before you, when you have given them their due compensation, desiring chastity, not unlawful sexual intercourse, or taking secret lovers. Let's put it this way. If this meme is correct on face value, all the Muslims I know would not be following the Quran. 3. Any religion other than Islam is not acceptable. 385 actually says, And whoever desires other than Islam as religion, Never will it be accepted from him, and he, in the hereafter, will be among the losers. Using this verse as a way to support the conclusion that ISIS interprets the Quran correctly seems quite mistaken. 
This says nothing about military action or violence. It is theologically, not militarily, focused. If you don't believe me, read the few verses following 85 and tell me it's not theological. 4. Maim and crucify the infidels if they criticize Islam. 533 actually says, Indeed, the penalty for those who wage war against the law and his messenger and strive upon the earth to cause corruption is none but that they be killed or crucified or that their hands and feet be cut off from opposite sides or that they be exiled from the land. That is for them a disgrace in this world and for them in the hereafter is a great punishment. Notice the initial instigator of violence. Those who wage war against the law and his messenger. Now, I'm no fan of crucifying or lobbying off the hands and feet of enemy offenders, but this is certainly not something particular to Muslims during that time. See what happened to Samaya bit Kayat, the law of the Abyssinian, or what the Quraysh leadership did to other early Muslims. But this is no tit-for-tat argument, it's merely pointing to historical context. Most importantly, I want you to read verse 32. Because of that, we decreed upon the children of Israel that whoever kills a soul unless for a soul or for corrupt done in the land, it is as if he had slain mankind entirely. And whoever saves one, it is as if he had saved mankind entirely. And our messengers had certainly come to them with clear proofs. Then indeed many of them, even after that, throughout the land, were transgressors. So does this verse advocate crucifying and maiming infidels at all times and in all places? No. Does it say to early Muslims during a war in which they are on the defensive that they could corporally punish their oppressors? Possibly. Either way, this is not the same thing this meme attempts to express. 5. Muslims must muster all weapons to terrorize the infidels. 860 actually says, and prepare against them whatever you are able of power and of steeds of war by which you may terrify the enemy of Allah and your enemy and others besides them whom you do not know but whom Allah knows. And whatever you spend in the cause of Allah will be fully repaid to you and you will not be wronged. If only people would read the following verse which says, And if they incline to peace, then incline to it also and rely upon Allah. Preparing for oppression to spark fear in oppressors is not the same as a preemptive strike. This is most certainly not what ISIS is doing. 6. Make war on the infidels living in your neighborhood. 9.123 actually says, O you who have believed, fight those adjacent to you of the disbelievers, and let them find in you harshness, and know that Allah is with the righteous. Not only is this surah dealing with treaties and rules of war, it's also about the suffering of early Muslims. Verse 128 says, There has certainly come to you a messenger from among yourselves. Grievous to him is what you suffer. He is concerned over you. Muslims were suffering on the defensive and having to prepare for attacks. They were not doing what ISIS is doing now. Now I recommend looking at Qasim Rashid's amazing piece on Muhammad's rules of war and my good friend Jeremiah Bowden's excellent piece on war and jihad. Now, I'm no scholar of Islamic military jurisprudence, but it doesn't take one to see how misleading this meme is.